We now understand how to go from some base to base 10. Uh, base 10 is also sometimes called the integer, uh, excuse me, the decimal representation of a value, but oftentimes we want to convert a decimal value or something that's in base 10 to a different base. And you might think about this as you want to get a computer to perform some arithmetic on integers, but it needs to be represented in base 2. So how might we go about doing this? Well, one way is to subtract off twos and see how many times we can do it. And, or subtract off fours or subtract off eights. So in this case, if we look at the binary value of 13, and we already know that the binary values will be how many individuals, how many individual tick marks we have. It could be zero or one. How many twos we have, it could be zero or one. How many fours we have, it could be zero or one. How many eights we have, it could again be zero or one. And we can continue on in this fashion. So if I take the number 13, the largest number that I can subtract away from 13 that is a multiple of two would be eight. So two to the third is eight. So if I take 13 and I subtract away eight, that leaves me with five. So that means that 13 has one grouping of eight in it. One grouping of eight is two groupings of four, and two groupings of four is four groupings of two. And we can't represent the number four in binary, so we have to kind of iterate over these different digits in order to be able to collect all of these multiples of two. Now I have five left. That means that I can't subtract away an eight, but I can subtract away a four. If I subtract away a four, that still leaves me with one left over. So that means that one multiple of four can go into 13. So, so far we have eight plus four is 12. We have one left over. I can't subtract away two from one, so there are zero twos remaining, but there is exactly one one remaining. And so I can do that one time to get me to zero. And so the number, the binary value 1101 represents the, bi uh, the base 10 value of 13. Now this would be very difficult for a computer to execute since there's so much intuition going on here and what we're doing is not systematic enough. So let's propose a way that we could do this more systematically. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ask myself in the decimal value 13. So again, base 10 is sometimes called the decimal value. 13 can be written as a certain number of multiples of two. And the reason I'm picking on two is because I, I want to know how many twos I can extract from 13. Well, on first glance, we see that there are six. We can extract two from 13 six times, and that leaves us with 12, which has a remainder of one. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on this 6 for a moment, and I'm going to copy this 6 down here, and I'm going to ask myself, how many times does 2 go into 6? So what I'm effectively asking is, if 2 goes into 13 6 times, and 2 goes into 6 3 times, you can kind of see how this is really asking for how many groupings of 4 are there going to be? Okay, so bear with me as we, as we work through this. We're going to repeat this process again. So now I'm going to take three. There are two, uh, three groupings of two and six, which has two groupings, uh, six groupings of two and 13. I'm going to take this quotient down again, and I'm going to write the same statement. How many times does two go into three. Well, it goes into three one time and then leaves me with a remainder of one. So we've effectively gone through how many two times two times two multiples are there in 13. In other words, how many two to the thirds are there? And I'm going to do this one more time. I'm going to take one and one has how many groupings of two in it? Well, it has zero. So effectively, I've run out of, now in this case, two to the four. There are, there are no two to the fours that go into 13. 
because I've run out of quotient here. And this is going to leave a remainder of one. Now you can kind of see what's going on here. If you take a look at this column of remainders, you can see that from the bottom to the top, one, one, zero, one is actually the binary representation of base 10 value 13. But why is this true? To see this, we're going to do some substitution, and this is going to seem somewhat odd at first, but once you see it, it'll, it'll make a lot more sense. So let's go ahead and grab this and move this over to the side here. And let's go ahead and keep track of all the things we did by performing substitution. So this is going to look somewhat ugly and messy at first, but by the time we're done, we'll have a nice algorithm for doing this. So 13 is equal to 2 times 6 plus 1. The next thing we did is we said 6 is equal to 2 times 3 plus 0. So I'm going to say that this is equal to 2 times 6. Okay, 6 is going to be substituted with 2 times 3 plus 0. That's just substituting 6 with what 6 is equal to in our second line, plus 1. But before I make a substitution for 3, 3 is our next candidate here, what I'm going to do to clean this up a little bit is distribute this 2. So I have 2 times 2, which is 2 squared, times 3, plus 2 times 0, and then this plus 1 on the end. All right, so again, 3 is our target. We're going to keep substituting until we make it down to this last line. So I have 2 squared times 3. 3 is equal to 2 times 1 plus 1. And then I have plus 2 times 0 and plus 1. Okay, so I'm going to distribute this out before I make my final substitution for 1 for this quotient. So I'll have 2 squared times 2 is 2 to the third, plus distributing the 2 squared to the 1, I have 2 squared times 1, plus I have this 2 times 0 plus 1. Now keep in mind that this, uh, a lot of these remainders are actually being multiplied by factors of 2 or multiples of 2. So the last thing I'm going to do here is we wanted to focus on this 1 right here. So I'm going to replace that 1 with what it's equal to, 2 times 0 plus 1. So I'll have 2 to the third plus 2 squared times 1, where 1 is equal to 2 times 0 plus 1. And then I have plus 2 times 0 plus 1. Almost there. So let's distribute one more time. And we have 2 to the third plus 2 squared times 2, which is 2 to the third, times 0, plus 2 squared times 1, plus 2 times 0, plus 1. Okay, well I have some extra 2 to the thirds. The 2 to the third times 0 is, uh, is, is effectively equal to 0. So I have really 2 to the third plus 2 squared times 1 plus 2 times 0 plus 1. And to make this more evident, 2 to the third is really 2 to the third times 1 plus 2 squared times 2, so times 1, excuse me, plus 2 to the first times 0. And you know what? 1 is actually the same thing as 2 to the 0 times 1. And what this number tells me right here, what this 1 here tells me, if I, if I write it out front as 1 times 2 to the third plus 1 times 2 squared plus 0 times 2 to the first plus 1 times 2 to the 0, is that I have 1 group of 8, I have 1 group of 4, I have 0 groups of 2, and I have 1 group of 1. So these values here, are our binary values from left to right of the expansion of 13 into binary form. Now it was kind of hard to keep track of all of these remainders, but if, if we 
if we kept track of where all these remainders went, we would see that the remainders themselves tell us the number of groupings of, of ones, the number of groupings of two, the number of groupings of three, uh, of, of four, and the number of groupings of eight. So this algorithm essentially says the following. If we want the base b expansion of an integer n, what we're going to do is first divide n by the base to obtain a quotient and remainder. So you notice that in our case this was 13 equals uh, b, our base was 2. We said 2 into 13 six times left a remainder of 1. The remainder a0 is the rightmost digit in the base b expansion of n. Next, divide q0, that is we're taking the quotient, which we took before, and we're dumping that down to the next line, and again asking ourselves, how many times does our base go into that value? And the remainder there will represent the, the digit to the left of a0. So essentially we're constructing a0 with the first remainder, a1 with the second, a2, and so on, depending on how many times this iteration requires before we end up with a quotient of zero. Okay, let's, check, let's try this out. Let's see how well this algorithm works. So if we were to take something like, uh, let's say 35, and that's in base two, I'm sorry, we wanna take 35 and represent it in base two. So what is that equal to in base two? What we're gonna start off doing is taking 35 and seeing how many times does two go into it. So two goes into 35 17 times, leaves a remainder of one. So, so far our binary value is, is going to have a rightmost digit of one. And that's the first remainder. Now we're gonna repeat this with the quotient 17 how many times does 2 go into 17? Well, it goes in 8 times, leaves a remainder of 1. So that means that this remainder is going to be our next digit. We now take the quotient, because it's still non-zero, 8. How many times does 2 go into 8? It goes into it 4 times, leaves a remainder of 0. That remainder represents the next digit in our binary expansion. And we'll do this again until our quotient is 0. So 2 goes into 4 2 times, leaves a remainder of 0. So that means our next digit in the binary expansion will be 0. And we'll do this one more time with the quotient. 2 is equal to, uh, how many times does 2 go into 2? Well, it goes in 1 time, leaves a remainder of 0. And then finally, 1, 2 goes into 1 0 times, leaves a remainder of 1. And there, ladies and gentlemen, is our binary representation of the number 35. We could do a quick check on this because we know that this is how many two to the zeros we have. This is how many two to the firsts we have. Two to the seconds, two to the thirds, two to the fourths, two to the fifths. And so two to the fifth is two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is 16, times two is 32. Two to the first is two. 2 to the 0 is 1, 3, 32 plus 2 plus 1 is equal to 35. And we can do this for whatever number system we are in. Let's do one more example. Let's say that we want to convert 35 into some value in hexadecimal. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 35 and we're going to ask ourselves how many times does 16 go into it? Well, it goes in twice, leaves a remainder of three. Now in this case, our remainder, our remainder is gonna be somewhere between zero, inclusive, but it can't be any bigger than 16. So it has to be somewhere between zero and 15. So having a remainder of three is okay. So far, what we know about our base 16 or hexadecimal expansion is that this first rightmost digit is gonna be a three. Next, we take our quotient, which is 2, and ask ourselves how many times does 16 go into 2? Well, it goes in 0 times, and it leaves a remainder of 2, 
and therefore that's going to be our next digit. And so our final answer is that 35 in base 10 is equal to 23 or 23 in base 16. If one of these values, if one of these came out to say, you know, what if this guy was 13? Well, we couldn't use the number 13 here. We would actually have to use the hexadecimal equivalent to 13. Well, A is 10, B is 11, C is 12, D is 13. So we would actually have to put a D in there if that were the case. And this is how we can convert from base 10 to any base system that we would like.